All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days? Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy, of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Today, we're going to have health coach Kate tell us a little bit about the carnivore diet and what it is exactly. I keep seeing these videos on the carnivore diet. Half of them are talking about these amazing amounts of weight that they've lost. The other half are talking about how they quit the carnivore diet and why. So let's find out what it is, and then we're going to listen to somebody that had to recently stop it. The carnivore diet. Now on to the carnivore diet, which is also known as the zero-carb diet. The carnivore diet puts the focus on eating only animal foods and no plants. This ends up being very low in carbohydrates by default because, with some exceptions, most animal foods have no or next to no carbs. So while the macro breakdown of the carnivore diet can be similar to keto, it can also be slightly higher in protein as well. And there really isn't anything wrong with this. I actually find that some people who have trouble sticking to keto or feeling satiated often aren't eating enough protein. And when they up their protein intake, they feel better. So because the carnivore diet is low in carbohydrates, it does have a lot of the same benefits as keto, but there are also additional benefits as well, which we'll get to in just a moment. Someone who is eating a carnivore diet will eat only foods that come from animals. Meat, fish, and eggs are staples, as they are with keto, but you do not eat any additional fruits or vegetables. Any products that come from animals can also be included, such as eggs, which we mentioned, and dairy. But I will mention that if you do include dairy, try to stick to things such as butter, heavy cream, and fermented dairy. Most people will get more benefits from the carnivore diet without consuming milk. Hey, if you're a doctor or a nutritionist, or if you know a lot about the carnivore diet, what is wrong with milk compared to the other dairy sources? If you could just let us know in the comments. Thank you. There are some individuals, particularly those who struggle with autoimmune conditions and gut conditions, who see much better improvements to their symptoms when they eat a carnivore diet. And this mainly comes down to someone's sensitivity to plants and to anti-nutrients specifically. Anti-nutrients are plants' defense mechanisms, and they impact everyone differently. Gluten is an example of an anti-nutrient. I'm sure we all know someone who's celiac and have heard about the horrible symptoms they experience if they consume gluten. But there are other anti-nutrients, such as lectins, phytates, and oxalates, which can cause similar symptoms for some people. Someone who is sensitive to lectins, for example, might experience bloating, skin conditions such as psoriasis, and fatigue after consuming foods high in them, such as tomatoes. So for an individual in this situation, the carnivore diet might be more effective. The big downside to the carnivore diet, however, is how restrictive it is. You are only eating meat and animal products, and this can get tedious for some people, especially socially. What it really comes down to is defining your goals and figuring out what you are trying to gain from sticking to a diet. Do you have an autoimmune condition such as arthritis? Then the carnivore diet might be better suited for you. And here is the other thing to remember. Your diet doesn't define you. She was going to say your diet doesn't define you, but you know it does, carnivores. So do you have any trouble when you socially meet up with the family for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? or? Is there always something you can manage to eat, right? One of the things I want to ask the doctors and the nutritionists and the fitness experts that might be watching this is, how come my memories of the 80s and 90s were one where we didn't have people that had um, sensitivities to gluten? We didn't have people that had sensitivities to this, that, and the other, right? I knew of people that were lactose intolerant, but I also knew there was lactate and certain things that they could take to help them digest milk or at least get it through their system without too many problems, right? I feel like today, one out of every three people has an issue. But at the same time, I feel like nine out of every 10 people aren't active and they don't move. And I'm just wondering if they moved and lost weight, 
if maybe some of these conditions wouldn't exist. So if you have your thoughts on that, please share them. I would love to read them. By the way, our next person that we're going to listen to is a person named Carnivore Kimberly. Her channel is called Just for the Health of It. She has been a carnivore for the last four years or so, but over the last couple of months, I guess she's had to change or stop doing that. And I shouldn't say that because I don't know exactly how old this video is. I'll have to relook at it. But ultimately, let's hear why she had to get off the carnivore diet. Yeah. Um, when I was on vacation, I was struggling really hard um, food wise. And you know what? I've always been a listen to your body, except when it comes to little Debbie's, because that's not your body saying, give me little Debbie's it, or donuts. It's, that's a devil saying that. So you just get that out of your mind. But I have been, I was struggling on carnivore. And I have to tell you, I've been a carnivore for five, over five years. And I quit. I just quit. Um, it was turning as someone who has an eating disorder background, carnivore was turning into an eating disorder for me. Um, it wasn't working for me ever since I had COVID. I had it the long one. It took forever for me to get over last year. And it just seemed like my metabolism, everything changed. Um, along with perimenopause and turning 50 and things like that. Um, you know, prices being jacked up and it's just the state of the world. I don't know what all it is, but I do, I'm being honest with you. And I, my goal is to be as transparent as possible. Hey, if you are eating a ton of meats on the carnivore diet or any diet that you're doing, the prices jacking up over the last couple of years make it exceptionally more and more difficult to, to maintain. And were there ever places where you had to cut corners <laughs> because of the prices? If you could share in the comments. And maybe you're also struggling. Maybe you're going through the same thing I am. So, um, you know, if you've seen my channel, uh, fitness, working out, walking, getting that free vitamin D, that is, that is really high up on my list. That is almost number one on my list, I would say, pretty much. First, the top two. Um, and I was struggling. I was struggling for energy. I was, uh, before you come at me about the fat, I wasn't eating enough fat. I know that. Um, I have never been able to consume high levels of fat. Um, as a kid, I wasn't able to eat fried foods. I was. I would get nause nauseated. I would throw up. Um, I would be sick the other way. Uh, sorry, guys, coffee. I believe that was Winnie the Pooh's honey pot. Where is she hiding poo? And... I've never been able to eat high fat. Uh, my gallbladder attacked me viciously when I was pregnant with my daughter. So, sorry guys. So I was not able to do that either. I'm sorry guys. Terrible. Um, but, so I wish I could do it high fat. I think if I was able to do carnivore high fat, I would have been able to go for a lifetime. Because I tried reintroducing veggies this year. Um, I've never, never really tried that before but and i failed but i and then i went ahead and did a couple rounds of antibiotics and i don't know if that's what what the secret is i don't know if that's what helped if i had a lot of inflammation from what i went through last year um still holding on um i probably but um so i gotta have a heart to heart with the carnivores here I've been watching some videos and even health coach Kate before Carnivore Kimberly kind of talked about these anti-nutrients, I guess, that vegetables have, that fruits, thyme, vegetables have these natural defenses that are actually killing us. But I want you guys to think about something. Back in the day, and when I mean back in the day, 100 years ago and before, man only lived to be 35 or 40 years old. So... Would they have even gotten poisoned from eating these vegetables, even if they ate them all the time, right? And the reason I say this is because if you look at the mongoose, right, the mongoose gets in a battle with the snake, and the snake bites the mongoose, right, and the mongoose still ends up eating the snake. It's not that the mongoose is impervious to the pain of the bite itself, right? And even the poison itself does still affect the mongoose. It's just over time, they've gotten to the point where it barely affects them, right? Same with the honey badger. You'll see some situations where they're actually in a, in a fight with a snake, 
And then afterwards, the snake venom actually makes the honey badger fall asleep, which means that technically another animal could come and kill it, right? But the poison itself does not kill the honey badger, nor does it kill the mink or the mongoose, right? <clears throat> and that's the same way I look at vegetables. Vegetables might be designed to kill us, but apparently over the thousands or hundreds of thousands of years man's been on this planet, we've developed ways where these vegetables don't really kill us, at least not in 40 years. Now, if we live to be 60, 70, and 80 like we do now, you know, maybe the vegetables do have some detriment long term. But I'm also watching the vegans battling you guys, and they're like, oh, those carnivores, they're going to get heart attacks and strokes. So we'll listen to their side too in the future. But I just wanted you guys to ponder that. Because that's how my brain works. To the show. So I just decided it was turning into an eating disorder for me. I thought about it all the time. Food, I was hungry all the time. Um, things just weren't feeling right, you know. And I mean, it's all I thought about. And if you have to white knuckle a way of eating, it's not worth it. Um, that's the whole reason why I got on the car carnivore to begin with was to uh, was for food freedom and I had it for a long time and it worked great for me for so long and it helped heal so many things in me so I am not dissing the carnivore diet at all but it is time for me to let go and I have and I have been reintroducing low carb veg I haven't done any fruits yet but um, it's, it's surprisingly going very well. Um, the only thing that I had a problem with was a, and I've only introduced three things. Well, four, actually. Um, I did a couple mushrooms, but it was okay. Um, they, they're not my favorite thing anyway. But um, main, mainly romaine lettuce, um, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And tomatoes and cucumbers are fruits anyway, so I guess I have reintroduced fruits. But um, I have been thinking about uh, raspberries a lot, so I think that maybe I'll um, try raspberries um, here in a week or two, give my body a chance to heal a little bit more. Who told her raspberries were poisonous? If you carnivores are going around telling people that raspberries are poisonous, then why aren't you guys in the grocery store building a wall around those yummy raspberries and forbidding us from eating them? I think there is a little mental illness that we all have in this country uh, regarding foods and stuff. Um, I, just, I just really do. I think that all these diets have one thing in common, avoiding sugar, walking and being active, drinking a lot of water. I have a feeling if we just applied those on a long-term basis, no more of these 30-day challenges, 90-day challenges, just, hey, let's do this for the rest of our lives. I think we'll all get back in that kid shape that we want to be in. Call me crazy. I know you don't think it's true, but it actually is true. You can lose a lot of weight without going through these crazy diets, I promise. Um, it's going surprisingly well. The only trouble I had was bagged iceberg lettuce salad mix. I, I have an intolerance to um, formaldehyde and that some of those bagged salad mixes are preserved. Their freshness is preserved with formaldehyde and I think that's what my issue was. I have to be careful of vinegar too. So vinegars um, will make me nauseous. Um, but all in all, it's going well, and I have I definitely have an increase of energy and not just my health journey, but my joy journey. <laughs> my joy journey is really taking off. Uh, I was always trying to convince my I always tried to convince myself that food was just fuel. Meat was just fuel. And, you know, and if I let myself get hungry enough, I really looked forward to it and really enjoyed it. I really did. Um, it, it wasn't a problem that way. But when we went on vacation and I was starving and I was finding things that just weren't ugh, the seed oils and the inflammation that I had uh, and was eating, it just, it wasn't worth it to me anymore, guys. So my channel is going into a direction of whole foods, um, animal-based, uh, without dairy, because I don't do dairy, but Mark... I'm not saying I completely have excluded dairy, but I do. I am lactose intolerant, so dairy is not going to be a, a normal fixture. But, um, 
you know, so I have opened myself up to a few more things that I had not opened myself up to before and totally excluded. But um, I am going to show you how I'm eating now, um, how I'm feeling with reintroduction. But I have quit carnivore. I am sorry to all of you who have joined my channel, my little tribe. Um, I have experience in all diets. I've been vegetarian. I've been vegan. I've done whole 30, paleo, keto, carnivore for five. And that was the be that was the most healing for me. But um, you know, so if you have any questions about any diets, please feel free to ask. Um, I am not dissing the carnivore diet. It was amazing. Um, for five years, it was amazing. Well, we'll say four years because I did run into some problems there last year, and. You know, it's been great for my fitness journey, and it's just been amazing. So I am not dissing it. You want to do um, carnivore, you're able to consume higher fats. Um, it's going to work well for you. You want to lose weight, I would not suggest doing a high-fat carnivore unless you have a whole lot of weight to lose. Then go for it, you know. Getting rid of the processed foods. That is number one. Getting rid of the sugars and the pastas and the breads. That is the most important thing here. Um, the standard American diet just sucks. So um, getting rid of all that garbage. And that's why I am not going to label myself to any diet, any way of eating. It is just going to be whole foods and animal based. So, um, you know, whole plant foods, whole, I'm not doing grains or I'm going to not do starchy vegetables and things like that. It's going to be lower carb. I think that that would best suit me for now. And um, then we'll we'll see where, where it goes from there. But I am going to continue to be a fitness channel, a health health channel, not just for 50-year-olds and over, but for anyone that's, that's starting their journey and you need a little help in that area. I mean, use my experience, guys. Uh, maybe you won't have to make some of the mistakes and ended up like I have ended up in certain ways. Um, physically. I don't know what that means. I wish she would, I wish she would tell us what she means by that. Like, did this cause her to have some sort of condition? I look at this person and again, I feel like I'm seeing a small person and I can't imagine adding raspberries and some cucumbers and lettuce and salad. I can't imagine that really affecting her in a bad way. If you're a carnivore and you know for a fact that I'm wrong and it is going to affect her in a bad way, tell me in the comments. Let's not fight about it. Let's talk about it. Anyway, listen, why don't you guys grab your shoes? Let's go for a walk. Good morning, venters. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Saturday. It's a TGIF for me. I really love Fridays, but if there's any day that can compete with a Friday and maybe even beat it, it's a Saturday, right? So I know a lot of times for Saturdays, we get together with the uh, spouse or we get together with the family. Then we go have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, right? And uh, today I have a story that once again is a little heartbreaking, but super interesting. I, uh, I never got into sushi. And uh, as a young adult, while eating crab legs and lobster one day at Outback, I found out that I was allergic to, uh, to shellfish. So uh, not only am I allergic to shellfish, but apparently there's components of shellfish in contrast dye. Uh, you know, when you go to the hospital, if you ever need to have contrast dye to see what's wrong with you, I'm allergic to that. And so are a lot of people uh, that are allergic to shellfish, I guess. So uh, I haven't had lobster and crab, at least not real lobster and crab, in about 25 years, and I do miss it. It was really, really yummy. I uh, absolutely love seafood. I still have fish, and when you go to the store, they have like this white fish imitation crab meat that I can eat, and it still reminds me a little of what the real stuff tasted like. Probably, probably not at the same level, of course. But the reason I bring that up is, have you yourself ever experienced food poisoning? I remember once when I was uh, in grade school, I had a burger and, uh, you know, a burger from, from at lunchtime. And it was one of those school-made hamburgers in the, in the silver foil, if I remember right. And I remember for the next three or four days, I was just sick as crazy. 
And uh, I guess we went to the hospital and we found out that it wasn't the flu, that it was legit food poisoning. Or no, no, I take that completely back. I, I, it was the burger, but I didn't have the flu or anything. It was legit food poisoning. But back then we didn't go to the hospital. I remember just kind of making my way through it, which looking back in hindsight, we probably should have went to the ER, but I don't know. My, my, my mom didn't really act like normal parents. She was a little younger than the rest of the average parents were back then. And I think sometimes she was afraid to take me into the hospital because I think she was afraid of the bill, which is really weird because my dad was never in the picture and my mom had long periods of unemployment. And it just makes me wonder, why didn't you just sign us up for, you know, access and and any other type of welfare services. And I think she eventually did when I got closer to like sixth and seventh grade. But even then, she was like afraid to take me in to have like doctor's appointments and stuff. I guess she just didn't really realize how the uh, welfare system worked at the time. But that's not really the point of the story. The point of the story is that in 1987, John and Donna Ventura of Bozeman, Montana, met and ultimately fell in love and got married, had a family. And apparently last, uh, last year, at one point or another, they met up with friends to eat at a place called Dave's Sushi. Now, because I was allergic to shellfish and because I didn't really like the idea of uncooked raw fish, right? I never really got into the sushi scene, but a lot of my friends did. And uh, from what I understand, it's perfectly safe. Millions of people eat fresh sushi, you know, constantly. But apparently when John and Donna ate at Dave's Sushi, she ate some uncooked Marcel mushrooms. These uh, uncooked mushrooms led to a situation where about an hour after consuming her meal, she started feeling a really intense stomach ache did not get better so ultimately John takes her to the ICU or the hospital where they admitted her into the ICU where she spent 12 painful agonizing days before she ultimately met her demise what was sad about this story is that about about halfway through she had started to have kidney liver and even trachea like burns and um, you know, pain, and I guess that's where the uncooked mushrooms had really affected her. And uh, apparently she lost the ability to speak due to the uh, trachea problem that she was having from the food poisoning. And she was just in pain because, you know, her body was literally kind of attacking her at this point, attacking itself. And so she started busting out with a red marker and paper, right? They gave her that so she could communicate and it's just really sad because the guy is real stoic and he's telling this story, right? And you're thinking, okay, well, it was from last year. So maybe he's a little easy, you know, maybe it's easier for him to tell the story. And he just started getting super emotional because, you know, he was reliving the moment as he's describing it to the, uh, to the news crew. And apparently her last couple of uh, letters that she was writing on this paper was just really, really sad, you know, like, hey, I want you to know I love you. And of course, she told her son, I want you to know I love you, but I want you guys to know that I don't think I'm going to make make it out of this. I'm in constant pain, which is crazy because, you know, the doctors were probably pumping her up with morphine for the pain or something. But apparently this pain was just so, so bad. And then ultimately, Apparently around day 11 or 12 or whatever, she refused a food trach. And apparently she died very, very shortly thereafter on day 12. And it just kind of made me think, God, these people went out to meet friends for sushi, thinking that they were just gonna enjoy sushi and have a wonderful day. And it ended up being 12 agonizing days. So my thought for you and question for you is, have you ever experienced food poisoning? It hurts, is what my experience was. Do you feel that same way? Do you feel uh, like food poisoning was the absolute worst thing you ever went through? If you did experience any type of food poisoning, let us know in the comments. 
Again, when I had food poisoning, it was from eating a hamburger in grade school, and I can still remember to this day just constantly throwing up, but I believe my mom knew it wasn't a fever because I wasn't really having uh, fever-like uh, temperatures and stuff from what I remember. And I just remember I felt icky right after eating that burger. I don't know if it was tainted or poisoned or just went bad, but either way, I remember when I was a kid, the school lunches were not the highest quality necessarily. And uh, I don't know what possessed me to skip pizza and eat a burger that day, but either way, I went for that burger and I still remember it to this day and wish I hadn't gone for that burger. If you uh, ever have a situation where maybe a friend also got poisoned and it was a pretty bad situation, let me know. And what would you do if you were John and, and Donna Ventura and you were, had to look at your significant other withering away in intense pain and there was nothing you could do about it? That's probably the toughest thing to deal with in this world, isn't it? When there's something happening and it's just beyond your control and there's literally nothing that you can do about it. That has got to be gut-wrenching. And the only thing I can think of that's worse when something's beyond your control is if it's not really affecting you, but it's affecting a loved one, you know? A lot of times we tell ourselves, you know, when we see somebody suffering, I wish I could take on that suffering so that my loved one, you know, could get beyond this, you know? But unfortunately, we don't have a trading system here with, uh, with fate, do we? You can't just look at somebody and trade places with them, you know? But what if you could? What if you could trade places with somebody that was going through pain and misery and you could make them better by taking it on yourself? You know, I know a lot of us like to think that we would take on that pain and we might very well for a child or a grandchild, right? Or a significant other. But I don't think we'd be doing it for every Tom, Dick and Harry, would we? Some of those things are just, uh, they're a real bad deal. So anyway, guys, let's talk about your Saturday. If you're like me and you're into week number, or excuse me, month number two, you might be losing three or four pounds by this time. You might have a situation where for whatever reason, this diet has just been really kicking it for you and maybe you're losing closer to eight, nine, 10 pounds or even more. But Saturday, is really that day where because you don't have to work, or at least many of us don't, it's that day where extra credit is just the way to go, you know? So if you're contemplating doing extra credit, but you haven't thus far, maybe today, get those shoes on. Quit watching this from your couch. Grab your shoes, let's go, it's a beautiful day. By the way, every day, the last couple of days, it's been in the 90s here in Arizona. I haven't really had to tell you about it because I've been walking during the early morning here where it's closer to like 60 degrees. But Arizona weather, it's really crazy. You go from the coolness and the, and the cold of winter to the immediate hot warmth of summer. There, there, there are no seasons here, at least not in Phoenix. If you've ever been to Prescott or Flagstaff, Arizona, those are real beautiful areas where they actually do experience all four seasons. But for whatever reason, we're not that lucky here in Phoenix. So we have this little area now where during the morning it's nice, but during the afternoon it's gonna start getting impossible. So my thoughts for you are wherever you live, if you know it's gonna start getting real uncomfortable for an outside walk, then I need you to jump into your think tanks and really start to prepare because I don't like the idea of us just hibernating for, you know, the season. We gotta keep walking, we gotta keep this going. Is there a challenge there? Of course. During the winter, there's no challenge where I am, but where you guys are, there might be snow, right? During the summer, there's a challenge where I am because of the intense heat, but a lot of places where you guys live, there's intense heat and humidity as well. So, you might want to think about maybe walking with a bottle of water, right? Make sure you stay extra hydrated as the weather starts to change and get warmer. Make sure that uh, make sure that you you keep on top of your shoes. 
If you feel like the laces are getting gnarly or the shoes are getting gnarly, maybe it's time to go and splurge this weekend and get yourself a new pair. I know Mala and I have gotten a couple new pairs of shoes for our walks and stuff. Have you splurged and spent a couple dollars on yourself and gotten yourself some new shoes or maybe a, a new jogging or walking outfit? Those things are always fun, right? That's one of the things where maybe me and Mala have something in common. I'm the type that when I set my mind to do something, I'll kind of set it in stone by going out and buying something for it, right? So if I know that I'm gonna be walking, you know, it's not uncommon for me to go to the store and constantly have my eye on new walking shoes. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've always loved shopping. Shopping's always fun. If your pants and clothes are kind of constrictive, it might be nice to get yourself a nice pair of soft shorts that you can walk in comfortably. If anybody uh, is walking around in uncomfortable shoes just because they don't want any excuses, let me know. If you're out here walking around in your dress shoes from work, I find that super impressive. Here's a thought I have for you. Sometimes we're in a situation, especially if we go on a little trip or vacation, you might not have any walking shoes available. But, you know, even though you're in your high heels or if you're in dress, you know, shoes, you got your Oxfords on or something, I, uh, I think you should still try walking. If it's absolutely impossible, then, you know, don't. But maybe kick off your shoes and walk around in your hotel room just so you don't lose what you've started, you know? I think one of the easiest ways to get out of our routine is when we do something that's a little different, like going on a vacation or a trip. It's real easy to say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch my uh, diet and my exercise plan for this whole five-day vacation we're on, you know? And it shouldn't really kill you or hurt you as long as you're able to go right back when you get home, right? The only problem is everything we do, we have a, a chance of making it habit. So when you go five, six days in a row without walking, you know, you're starting a new habit. Your habit is becoming a non-walker. When you have sugar five or six days in a row, and I don't mean just your regular donut at the end of your day. I mean, if you're having it consistently through the day, well, you're no longer really avoiding sugar. You're eating it all the time, okay? So, you, so even though yesterday and in previous days I've told you not to stress it if you, eat a, if you eat a donut and if you've come to the reality that you're never gonna stop with your donut, you know, don't freak out, just move on. But at the same time, even though uh, I guess I'm okay with you having your donut, right? I still think you should try your best to stick to just that one donut a day. Don't start making it an all day habit because before you know it, you're kind of wasting your time with exercise, right? You're just, uh, you're just trying to fight the weight that you're gonna put on from eating the bad stuff. I, uh, I love how Saturdays and Sundays, the whole of the day is wide open. Now it's interesting again, because it's Friday for me, so I'm gonna go right in and go to work, but you know, you're doing the same thing as I am today. You're, it's Friday for you, but you're seeing this on Saturday. If you don't have plans and you never have plans and maybe that's part of the reason that you are working out so you feel more confident well guess what you're one day closer to your goal keep that up I found out that uh, the thing I was sharing with you guys yesterday about the 911 services apparently those services even though they were in different states apparently they weren't affected by some sort of terrorist you know, attack apparently, or uh, not terrorist attack, but cyber attack from, from foreign entities. Apparently it was just a improperly installed light pole, which seems a little suspect, doesn't it? Like, I don't know exactly how installing a light pole wrong affects certain cellular towers in certain different states, but you know, it is what it is. The scary thing about our media is sometimes they like to kind of keep us in the dark about stuff and we end up finding out through investigative journalism you know that it's not quite what they say that one i found a little suspect because it's like okay if a light gets in a light pole gets installed improperly 
I've never in my life thought that's going to knock down cellular service or 911 services in multiple states. And that's what I meant if I said cellular services earlier. It knocked out 911 services in a handful of states. And only at the uh, late night hours for a certain amount of time. Which is also strange. I mean, unless they're fixing light poles at 1 or 2 in the morning or whenever it was. That just seems kind of odd. The story that they're giving us seems a little shaky there. Have you, uh, do you have any fond memories of going out with family members maybe while they were still with us and maybe they're not with us anymore? I bet they would be really happy if you have some relatives that are no longer with us. I bet they would be really happy that you're starting to walk daily and take, take your health a little bit more seriously. If you're one of these dieters that has reached a plateau with other diets and you're trying something new by joining us, let me know. Because every now and then I'll get a comment and it sounds like some of you guys are doing the carnivore diet or the keto diet or the South Beach diet. And maybe you're coming to our channel to kind of get into a walking routine to go along with what you're doing. If you're on a completely different plan from us, but you just really enjoy walking with us, let me know, I think that's awesome. And whatever diet and exercise plan you're on, I wish you the most of success. I like to, uh, I like to poke fun at the other diets, not really in a hardcore poking fun way, but I like to show the tough parts of those diets because you know guys, I tried some of those diets in the late 90s with my wife we tried Dr. Atkins's Atkins diet. And I just felt really off about that because I can still remember in the morning, we would cook 10 or 12 sausage links. We would cook a whole thing of bacon. And it was just like these really intense breakfasts where I felt guilty with every bite. Like, my God, am I clogging my arteries or what? And then I'll never forget that we were eating sugar-free jello. And I remember at first I thought, God, this sugar-free jello is delicious. And it was for like a day or two. But after a while, I was like, I don't want to ever eat sugar-free jello again. And by the way, I haven't. Your boy has not had sugar-free jello in 25 years. And I don't plan on ever having sugar-free jello again. I uh I noticed that when we were watching, actually, it'll be the video that you guys are watching right now. So Natalie de Grazia is talking about this night where she was drinking some Puerto Rican rum, right? And how it just really affected her bad because she takes Ozempic shots. And we actually got to see a little bit of her, you know, inebriated there, right? And it's kind of funny when you see somebody drunk, but it's not funny when you know that internally they feel really not right, you know? But anyway, she uh, is drinking and she gets really, really sick. And that was just really kind of a scary situation. And I'm glad that she shared that with us. But one of those things where it's like, oh my God, don't drink when you're taking Ozempic shots. It's going to really really affect you did you know that uh, people when they're through weight loss surgeries and when they're taking ozempic and wagovi one of the side effects that's possible is is becoming an alcoholic because whenever you drink something and it instantly gets you wasted you now there's a chance you might like that and if you like it a little too much all of a sudden you're like hey it only takes me one or two drinks to get a buzz on I could see how that could turn into alcoholism real, real quick, you know, exceptionally quick. If any of you have conquered alcoholism or anything like that and you feel like sharing it, you know, please feel free to do so. If it's a little too personal and you don't want to share that, I completely understand. So there's two or three of us that are at the point where I am, where they've lost four pounds. There's a handful of people that have lost less. There's a handful of people that have lost more. The main thing is, is 
not all of us have lost 15 or 20 pounds like Elaine, but at the same time, the goal is to get up there where Elaine is, and hopefully we will at the end of this month. So we're right there. So I want you guys to just keep going and have a wonderful weekend and make this the day where instead of walking for half an hour, just repeat the, the walk that you went on and do it twice and make it a one hour walk. And maybe you could uh, make that your next baby step where every single day you're gonna start walking two walks or at least not every single day, maybe on the weekends, start pumping it up to a one hour walk and let's see if that extra eight days over the course of a month has any effect. On the other end of things, if you cut down from three sodas to two and you're ready to do make that next jump and cut down to one soda, do it. Because if you cut down to one soda a day and you combine the extra walks on the weekend, that might just be the recipe we need to get a little bit more weight loss here into month number two. I think a lot of these other diets have uh, really tough things that you have to deal with, right? It's not easy to eat nothing but cabbage soup. It's not easy to eat things knowing that they're gonna make you, you know, throw up and stuff. There are some benefits to our diet. There's really not any tough, tough aspects. There's challenges, right? When you're going from nothing but drinking soda and stuff to cutting down, but you can baby step that so it's a slow process. You don't have to, you don't have to do all or nothing, so to speak. But just remember, if you do go through weight loss surgery, if you do take Wagovi and Ozempic, don't start messing around with alcohol. You know, if you're gonna be going on these drugs to, uh, to improve your health, you know, do your best to meet the drug halfway and try to be healthy. I remember the reason I brought up Natalie earlier, it kind of spaced as I was talking about it, but did you notice that she was eating not only a fruit by the foot that made her feel better, thank goodness, because apparently she thought her sugar was low. But did you guys notice that within a couple of days or within a couple of hours, according to her, she drank a Sprite and two Diet Cokes? That's the real problem with drinking sweet drinks. We think to ourselves, well, it's diet, it's okay for me. But diet soda is kind of like Dorito chips. People never have just one. My ex-wife was a Diet Coke addict, and it was really crazy because she would literally drink a two liter of Diet Coke every day. I don't know what addictive chemical they put in Diet Coke, but I think it's stronger, stronger than the caffeine they put in regular Coke, because once people are drinking that, they never stop. Are you addicted to Diet Coke? And if you are, are you trying to cut down a little, if not all, you know? Stay strong, know that the uh, cravings that you're going through and the tough times that you're going through when you choose a carrot and or a banana over something sweet, just know I'm going through those same things. Others are going through those same things, but you wanna know something? I've been basically sugar-free for three weeks now. I don't go to the store anymore and love staring at the donuts and thinking about breaking my diet because that's what happens the first couple days you're like god i'm drinking a lot of water i'm i'm cutting down on my sweets and i used to have two donuts a day would it really hurt me if i had one but i knew that that first couple of days those are where you have to be your strongest so if you're already into week number two or three you're way ahead of the game you know I want you guys to know that we're all facing these same challenges. The grass always looks greener. When you watch these diets like the keto or the carnivore and you hear about these people that are having these miracle transformations, they're losing 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds. Those are wonderful things that we should celebrate. But just know, sometimes those diets can lead to people having really bad cholesterol problems or other health issues. I don't like to poo poo a diet because if you go from 350 pounds down to 250, you, you, probably, you probably did yourself some really good, good stuff there, right? You did good by yourself. But at the same time, if you're cheating on those diets, you know, I think whenever you cheat on those diets, that's when your cholesterol and things can really start to go out of whack. 
And whenever diets start making videos of like, hey, this is what you're doing wrong in the diet, whenever that happens, you know that, you know, that diet has a magic handshake. And you gotta be careful. If you're doing a diet and you find out that you're doing it wrong, you know, to me, that, that's kind of a downfall of the diet, right? If I was only eating one meal a day, call me crazy, but I would wanna have, I would wanna have, you know, probably a gnarly meal too, right? You're starving and there's pizza there, heck yeah, give me the pizza. But if you only have one meal a day and then on top of that, it's gotta be this stringent, totally healthy meal, right? With these totally good carbs. <sighs> so anyway, we're in the Atkins diet, right? Me and my wife. And we make all this sausage and bacon and it just didn't feel right to me. Does that feel right to you? If you've done the diet with great success, wonderful. But on your first day, did you experience the same things I did with the, uh, with the Atkins where you just feel like, God, I'm eating like the worst meal ever here. This greasy sausage, this greasy bacon. When I was eating bacon or eggs, bacon and eggs before, it was like, you know, okay, you have your eggs and you have your bacon. Now I was having the eggs, the bacon and the sausage, right? And you're basically not eating the tortilla or the bread with it. And then from what I remember, with the Atkins diet back then, you were allowed to have like some green leafy stuff as far as vegetables. Like I think you were allowed to have lettuce or whatever, romaine lettuce. But I don't think you were allowed to have like traditional vegetables or something. So sometimes they make these diets out to be like, you can eat whatever you want. And then you slowly but surely realize well, hell, I really want bread. <laughs> and hell, I really don't want any more of the sugar-free jello. I want something different, you know? And like I said, when you're eating those diets, if you're strict with those diets, maybe your cholesterol levels improve, maybe your weight starts coming off of you. But if you cheat on those diets, all of a sudden, you're eating a cholesterol bomb, you know? And uh, I think that's what happens a lot, at least with the carnivore. I almost always hear about these people on these videos, and you can see them, they're endless on YouTube. Why I quit carnivore, why I quit this, why I quit that. And a lot of times it's because they ended up having a heart attack or a stroke or an arrhythmia or a irregular heartbeat or a, you know, a seizure. <laughs> Those are scary things, you know? And that's what Natalie kind of had too. She's like, I felt like I was having a seizure and an out of body experience. So my thinking is there's always a diet for you, right? There's always a cure that somebody's gonna mention to you. My, uh, my idea is why don't we give ourselves a little time? Why don't we apply a little bit of patience, right? We're all human. Why don't we just try to eat a little bit better, try to move a little bit more, and try to stress a little bit less. I've been watching a lot of these diets. Not one of them talks about stress. Not one of them talks about Karen and Dale at work making your life miserable. Those are the real reasons we have problems. This upcoming week, I'm gonna start showing some videos of people that felt like their spouse or their significant other left them because of their weight. That's a stressful situation. Could you imagine? If your husband or your wife said, hey, your punk butt better start losing some weight or, or you're gonna be out of here. Could you imagine how stressful that would be? It's harder for a spouse to say that to, a, to another spouse if they know that their spouse is trying their best. So if you want your husband or your wife to know that you wanna try harder, that you're doing your best, don't tell them, John, I'm doing my best. All right, Pe people like to talk about what they're doing. Instead, show John what you're doing. John, I've been taking this walk with this guy named Jesse. Who's Jesse? He's this really studly, nice guy, and he's been taking me on walks. Where is he? Show me him. He's right here on my phone. Listen, I've been walking every day. We have a lot of situations coming up with the kids going to college and you know we want to trade in cars and stuff do you think you'd like to take a walk with me no helen you know i don't do that listen i know but in the future i just want you to know that you have a permanent invite if you ever want to go on a walk with me 
I want you to walk with me because I'm a walk, talk, venter. And then, you know, he'll think you're nuts. But that might be a fun thing to do with your husband or wife. If there's one partner that I'm totally okay with you walking with on the daily, it's your husband or wife, you know? If you can start a tradition, even with your kids or grandkids, I'm not against that, you know? And if you do find a best friend or a neighbor that is willing to walk with you every day and they take walking as seriously as you do, I would never have a problem with that either. Make sure that you make yourself a promise that if any one of those walking partners doesn't walk, you're still gonna walk. Because remember, I'll be here with you. I wanna wish you a beautiful day. I might do another video later for you. So have a wonderful one. Oh, and by the way, if you could leave me a comment, I'm thinking about taking the reaction part of the video, the beginning part, and I'm thinking about taking all four or five of those pieces during a week and then having a Friday or Saturday night video where instead of the walking, it's just a couple of those interviews back to back to back. If you like those reactions and you think that would be a good idea and you wouldn't mind watching a Friday or Saturday night video in addition to our morning walk, let me know. And with that, have a wonderful day.